The Polar Express, written and illustrated by Chris Van Alsberg. On Christmas Eve many years ago, I lay quietly in my bed. I did not wrestle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I was listening for a sound, a sound a friend had told me I'd never hear, the ringing bells of Santa's sleigh. There is no Santa, my friend had insisted, but I knew he was wrong. Late that night, I did hear sounds, though not of ringing bells. From outside came the sounds of hissing steam and squeaking metal. I looked through my window and saw a train standing perfectly still in front of my house. It was wrapped in an apron of steam. Snowflakes fell silently around it. A conductor stood at the open door of one of the cars. He took a large pocket watch from his vest and looked up at my window. I put on my slippers and robe. I tiptoed downstairs and out the door. All aboard, the conductor cried out. I came up, I ran up to him. Well, he said, are you coming? Where, I asked. Why, to the North Pole, of course, was his answer. This is the Polar Express. I took his outreached hand and he pulled me aboard. All aboard! All aboard! Tickets, please, tickets. Well, you're coming. Stunning view that rivals all the best, but you won't ever see it advertised. It's a simple fact we stay on track, though sometimes we digress, but that can only happen on the Polar Express. That's the sound of her breathing. Express. Lights are gleaming far across the snow. You're not dreaming. May I present the North Pole? If it's penguins you expect of you, you surely haven't guessed. They all live down at the other end. With a little luck, we'll be on time. There's no need to stress, because that's the way things happen on the Polar Express. That's the sound of a singing. Check my manifest. Young man, that is not a toy. Take your seats, please. Take your seats. The train was filled with other children, all in their pajamas and nightgowns. We sang Christmas carols and ate candies with nugget centers as white as snow. We drank hot cocoa as thick and rich as melted chocolate bars. Outside, the lights of the towns and village flickered in the distance as the Polar Express raced northward. Only got one room, never ever let it cool. 
no more lights to be seen. We traveled through cold, dark forests where lean wolves roamed and white-tailed rabbits hid from our train as it thundered through a quiet wilderness. We climbed through mountains so high it seemed as if we would scrape the moon. But the Polar Express never slowed down. Faster and faster we ran along, rolling over peaks and through valleys like a car on a roller coaster. The mountains turned into hills, the hills to snow-covered plains. We crossed to a barren desert of ice, the great polar ice cap. Lights appeared in the distance. They looked like the lights of a strange ocean liner sailing on a frozen sea. There, said the conductor, is the North Pole. The North Pole? It was a huge city standing alone on the top of the world, filled with factories where every Christmas toy was made. At first we saw no elves. They are all gathering at the center of the city, the conductor told us. That is where Santa will give the first gift of Christmas. Who receives the first gift, we all asked. The conductor answered, he will choose one of you. Look, shouted one of the children, the elves. Outside we saw hundreds of elves. As our train drew closer to the center of the North Pole, we slowed to a crawl. So crowded were the streets with Santa's helpers. When the Polar Express could go no further, we stopped and the conductor led us outside. We pressed through the crowd to the edge of a large open circle. In front of us stood Santa's sleigh. The reindeer were excited. They pranced and paced, ringing the silver sleigh bells that hung from their harnesses. It was a magical sound, like nothing I've ever heard. Across the circle, the elves moved apart and Santa Claus appeared. The elves cheered wildly. He marched over to us and pointed to me and said, Let's have this fella here. He jumped into his sleigh. The conductor handed me up. I sat on Santa's knee and he asked, Now, what would you like for Christmas? I knew that I could have any gift I could imagine. But the thing I wanted most for Christmas was not inside Santa's giant bag. What I wanted more than anything was one silver bell from Santa's sleigh. When I asked, Santa smiled. Then he gave me a hug and told an elf to cut a bell from the reindeer's harness. The elf tossed it up to Santa. He stood holding the bell high above him and called out, the first gift of Christmas. A clock struck midnight as the elves roared their approval. Santa handed the bell to me and I put it in my bathrobe pocket. The conductor helped me down from the sleigh. Santa shouted out the reindeer's name and cracked his whip. His team charged forward and climbed into the air. Santa circled once around us and then disappeared in the cold 
dark polar sky. As soon as we were back inside the Polar Express, the other children asked to see the bell. I reached in my pocket, but the only thing I felt was a hole. I had lost the silver bell from Santa Claus's sleigh. Let's hurry outside and look for it, one of the children said. But the train gave a sudden lurch and started moving. We were on our way home. It broke my heart to lose the bell. When the train reached my house, I sadly left the other children. I stood at my doorway and waved goodbye. The conductor said something from the moving train, but I couldn't hear him. What? I yelled out. He cupped his hands around his mouth. Merry Christmas, he shouted. The Polar Express let out a loud blast from its whistle and sped away. On Christmas morning, my little sister Sarah and I opened our presents. When it looked as if everything had been unwrapped, Sarah found one last small box behind the tree. It had my name on it. Inside was the silver bell. There was a note. Found this on the seat of my sleigh. Fix that hole in your pocket. Signed, Mr. C. I shook the bell. It made the most beautiful sound my sister and I had ever heard. But my mother said, Oh, that's too bad. Yes, said my father. It's broken. When I shook the bell, my parents had not heard a sound. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell. But as years passed, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear its sweet sound. Though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me, as it does for all those who truly believe. Much to celebrate. Believe in what you feel inside and give your dreams the wings to fly. You have everything you need if you just believe. Trade. again on Christmas Day. Believe in what your heart is saying. Hear the melody that's playing. There's no time to waste. There's so much to celebrate. Believe in what you feel inside. 
and give your dreams the wings to fly. You have everything you need if you just believe. If you just believe.